Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Project Auto YouTube channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. And uh, in today's video, we are finally going to tackle the coolant leak um, in the Volkswagen Jetta. We finally got our new water uh, outlet housing assembly. Uh, so we've got it pulled back into the garage here. Um, so we're going to uh, get that changed out and hope that that fixes our issue. Um, so I will be showing you guys how to replace the water outlet housing on a 2004 Volkswagen Jetta. I'm sorry if you hear the cat in the background. I have an outdoor cat that really wants to come in here, but I'm busy. So, all right, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do, you don't actually really need to do this. There are some other videos out there on YouTube uh, showing you how to uh, tackle this repair, um, but this is just something I want to do to make this a little bit easier. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get this air box out of the way. So the first we need to do is we need to loosen this clamp. So we're just going to get our pliers on here, loosen that clamp, go on back just like that. And then we can get this hose off of here just like that. Okay, second thing we need to do is there's another breather hose down here. So you just wiggle that loose out of there just like that. And then we should be, we have one screw right here. So really, um, I think there's supposed to be one down there and one over here. But in this case, we only have the one and I actually rigged that one up to work. So we're going to take that Phillips screw out and then this whole housing should be able to come right out. All right, so we got the breather box out of the way. You also need to disconnect your uh, mass airflow sensor, so we'll just tuck that off to the side. And then we have these hoses here. We can just tuck those off to the side as well. Um, the piece that we're going to be replacing is right here. Um, so like I said, you didn't need to take, um, you know, that breather box out. This just gives you a whole lot more space to go in through here. Um, videos I've seen, people don't take that off. Um, but... Totally up to you, that's what we did. Um, so next thing we're gonna do um, is we are going to disconnect the uh, temperature sensor uh, electrical connector right here. So there's a little tab on the side, just push on that, um, and then it should lift right up out of the way. All right, so what we're gonna do instead, um, we are, since we're not gonna replace the temperature sensor, um, you know, in most cases I would recommend doing that, but this one's not that old, so I don't think we're gonna need to uh, replace it. Um, but, so instead of disconnecting that uh, electrical housing, there is a little C-clip that goes right across here. So just go ahead and pull that out, and then you can pull the whole uh, sensor right out of the hole. Now, don't be alarmed, you will get some coolant. As you can see, we've got uh, coolant coming out there, uh, but we do have a bucket underneath that we're gonna attempt to co uh, collect as much of it as we can. Um, but uh, we got that temperature sensor out of the way, so we're going to go ahead and start removing the hoses. Um, so in this case, you have three. One in the front here, one in the back, and then one down there in the bottom. So we'll go ahead and get those out of the way. You will get more coolant, so just make sure you have a bucket ready. Alrighty, so we got the back hose there unhooked. We got this front hose unhooked. Um, we did, you know, obviously lose some more coolant. Um, so you're gonna have coolant everywhere. Don't be afraid of that. Everything's gonna be fine. Uh, we do have one hose left there on the bottom. It's kind of being stubborn. I got the clamp off of it, but uh, it's a little stuck. So we're gonna get that one off um, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we got that bottom hose off so the next step is it's going to be kind of hard to see so i'm going to see if i can't get you guys in here to show you um, there is one 10 millimeter nut right there and then there's another one right there and you can kind of see it's covered in that pink stuff right there um, those two 10 millimeter nuts need to come out and then the uh, whole assembly will be removed all right so we got the bolt out on that side you can see um, this side's a little bit more tricky um, i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get a good camera angle here so right there you see we removed the one 10 millimeter nut and it's slotted right there um, this pipe that runs across the top here or hose whatever um, once we get that 10 millimeter nut out we need to lift that hose up just enough um, and then there's a another 10 millimeter bolt behind there that's actually holding the entire housing in. So 
we'll lift it up with one hand um, and then try to get the 10 millimeter in there um, and get it out. Alrighty, so we went ahead, we got that last bolt out, we got this thing out. Um, you can see there's no visible cracks. This is a plastic housing. There's no visible cracks, uh, but you can see that gasket's pretty well, uh, pretty well shot. Um, and that is definitely where our problem was because you can see the, uh, the remnants. And when we observed the leak before, it was leaking straight down right there and then going down behind the motor. Um, so this was definitely our uh, culprit here. Um, so now that we got that out, we need to clean up that mating surface just a little bit. So I'm going to do that off camera, um, and then we'll be ready to install the new uh, water outlet. Alrighty, guys. So we are ready to install the new water outlet. We've got our gasket installed. Um, just a heads up, make sure that gasket's in there um, properly and evenly. Um, you don't want it popping out or pinched or anything like that. So we've got that in there. So now we're going to install it. We're going to do the back bolt first because that's a little bit more difficult. Um, but like I said, just it's very important to make sure that that gasket is in there all the way and it's in there perfectly. Alrighty guys, so we got it in there. I've kind of jumped ahead a little bit. Um, but we got the new water outlet housing um, in there. Both bolts are tightened. We've got the uh, 10 millimeter nut on right there. Um, that back one's the hardest. Um, but like I said, if you just um, lift that top hose up out of the way and then just carefully put in that back one, make sure you don't uh, cross thread it um, or strip anything and make sure that you don't over tighten either one of those um, because you are tightening against plastic and threading into an aluminum block. So very easy to crack that plastic, very easy to strip out those threads. Um, I would say a good 10 to 12 foot pounds um, is a good number because you want it pretty snug as well because that's a high pressure uh, area. So we got that done. We did put the uh, coolant temperature sensor back in. It just pops in um, until you feel it snug all the way in and then just put in your uh, C-clip there. Um, and then I also went ahead and reinstalled the bottom hose already. That was the, the hardest one because of that clamp. So just make sure you get those put on all the way um, flush. And you can actually see here on these where you have these lines here. That's how far on uh, the hose needs to go. Um, and then we'll clamp it. So um, we're going to go ahead and install those other two hoses. Um, and we'll, we will be ready to put uh, everything back together. Uh, we will need to start the engine um, and make sure we don't have any leaks. So let's go ahead and get that done. Alrighty guys, so um, the last thing, like I said, we need to do is we need to make sure that we have no leaks um, and then we will need to bleed uh, the cooling system. Um, but I am going to go ahead and put everything back in, um, super easy to take back out if I need to, and I can still see, uh, four leaks. Um, so we're going to put it all back in opposite of how we took it out. Um, so air box is going to go in and, uh, we'll be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera real quick and then we'll check it for leaks. Alrighty guys. So we have bled the cooling system using the uh, spill proof funnel. I will make a separate video on uh, how to use a spill proof funnel and uh, bleed your cooling system. Uh, but we are to the max line with coolant and we have no leaks down here. Uh, it's hard to see, but where it was leaking from before down there, uh, there is no more active leaks. There is a lot of coolant everywhere, so that will burn off as we drive um, or I will take it through the uh, car wash and uh, spray that off so but that is it guys that is how you replace the water outlet uh, housing on a 2004 Volkswagen Jetta with a 2.0 so hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up stop by for the first time if you haven't already and you want to hit the subscribe ring the bell we'll see you guys in the next one bye bye no, but I wasn't wrong, nothing